No, actually, if, if, um, if we were to look into in, the scriptures, you wouldn't have to look far to see all the ways in which God has hardwired into our faith a language to complain to him when things aren't going the way we think they should. God has actually given us a language to, to speak. It's an ancient language that exists if, if you have eyes to see it. And what I want to do today is actually just pull that language out of the, 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 the ancient world and put it today in front of you to say, here is how we can fight with God when it, things like, when it seems like things aren't going your way. The, the, the place that we're going to look today is in the Psalms. The Psalms. I, I um, love Monty Python. Uh, growing up, still love Monty Python. Monty Python used to rail about the Psalms because they were so depressing. And that's kind of true. If you look at the Psalms, about half of the Psalms vacillate between praise, this like, great, God, you're so good, and then absolute sorrow. God, where are you? The Psalms seem to be the diary of someone who's struggling with the whiplash of life and the highs and the lows. There's a psalm that I want to point us to today. It's just a couple of verses. It's really, really short. It's psalm chapter 13. If you've got a phone or a Bible, I'd love for you just to pull it up so you can see it in front of you so you know I'm not making this up. But, but Psalm chapter 13 was, was written by one of the most re revered leaders in history, King David. He was one of Israel's kings. Not only was he an incredible leader, David was someone who we would say had a very close relationship with God. But if you look at what David writes in Psalm 13, it doesn't seem like David has a close relationship with God. But in David's psalm, the psalm of lament, David shows us the blueprint and the benefits for fighting with God. There are blueprints, there are benefits to us practicing this ancient language of lament. Let me show you, let me show you what what I mean. Here, here we go. Uh, verse one. Uh, before I jump in, is this a real topic for you? Yeah. You ever want to fight with God? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Me too. How long, oh Lord? I don't know if you've ever asked that prayer, asked that of, of yourself. How long will this happen? How long is this going to go on? But, but you know you're in a spot where you need to fight with God when you start asking, how long is it going to be like this? C.S. Lewis uh, lost his wife, Joy Davidson, wrote an incredible book out of the sorrow that he felt called A Grief Observed. And in that book, he recognizes the feeling of lostness that he has. It's akin to just a circle, a loop, a track that's on repeat, just kind of rehearsing the pain of his heart over and over and over again until in one of the pages he says, I realized that I wasn't in an endless loop, but I was in a spiral a spiral of pain, and I didn't know if I was going up or if I was descending downward. And then here's the quote from C.S. Lewis. He says, but the only question I could ask of God was this simple question, how long? Each one of us has or will ask this question in your life. How long? This is exactly the question that David asks four times. Check this out. He says, how long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long? Will you hide your face from me? How long must I take counsel in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all the day? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Here's his request. Consider and answer me, O Lord, my God. Light up my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest my enemies say I have prevailed over him. Lest my foes rejoice because I am shaken. But I have trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. And I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. With, within these just simple six verses, David actually outlines for us the benefits and the blueprint for how to fight with God through lament. 